This is our third video on how to filter data in Flutterflow. And in this video, we're going to look at how to filter data with simple search. Now, there are two ways to implement search in Flutterflow. That's simple search and Algolia. Now, really quick, before we get started, what's the difference and when should you use one over the other? Well, the answer is simple quantity and quality. That is, if you've got lots of records, quantity, let's say more than a few hundred records with more than just one or two fields, so the data is a little bit more complex, use Algolia. That's what it's made for. Also, if you need more precise, better quality search results, use Algolia because you'll get things like typo tolerance and custom sorting and prioritization. So like if someone is searching for something and they don't spell it right, your results will still return the thing they were intending to type. That's Algolia. But if you need just a simple search like the name, then this video is for you. Okay. One last thing before we build this, and that is here's the big picture of how we build this. So we'll have a text input, a text field, and two lists. We need two lists because one of them we're going to use to show the whole list and the other we'll use when we're showing the filtered list. When we update the list, we're going to update it based on the widget state of the text field. That is, we'll filter the list according to what the user types in. And then we'll use a local state variable to determine when we will show the full list and when we show the filtered list. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Okay, great. Now let's dump in our list. Now, let me show you the data that we'll be tying to. We're going to be pulling from this fruits collection here. You see, we just got a list of fruits. And so let's just make a simple widget so we can display these. Great. So we got a widget here ready to be bound to our collection. So let's just come into our list view. And this is just a simple binding query collection. The collection is going to be from our fruits, a list of documents. We're not going to do any filtering yet and confirm. This is telling us that we're going to generate children. That's exactly what we want. So yes. Great. Now let's just give ourselves a little bit more room and bind our variables so that we can actually see the images and the text. Awesome. All right. So we got one list for you, but if you remember, we actually need two, one for when we're showing the full list and one for when we're showing the filtered list. So we're just going to grab our list view, copy it, go back into our column and paste another copy in. So now we've got two, and this is a good time now to set our column to scrollable. Great. Now we need to set up a local variable so that we know when to show the full list and when to show the filtered list. So come on over to our local state and we're gonna add a variable. It's going to be called something like show full list and it's going to be a Boolean because it only has two states, either true or false. Create that and our default value is going to be true. So we check that and we're all good. Next, let's set up our search action. So let's go back to the builder and we want to go to our button right here and set an action on it. We want that action to be a simple search, not a dimple search, a simple search. The search type is going to be from a Firestore collection because that's what we have bound here. The collection is going to be our fruits. And here we're going to select which fields we want searchable. Let's click both because I want to show you something cool. And then here, the search term, that's going to be what the user types in here. So we don't want a specific value. That would be just like if I literally wrote something in here like red and it would filter red every time. No, 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 no. What we want is we want from a variable because we want it from here, from our text field. So we're going to click into there. And so where are we getting this from? Well, we're getting it from a widget state. That is our text field input right here. So we go into widget state and we can see Flutterflow has done some magic to show us the only ones that we have available to us. So that's beautiful. And so now we're all set up. So when this button is clicked, a simple search action will run. Great. We're almost done. Now, remember, we've got those two lists, so we need to add another action here. So let's open our action flow editor and we've got our one action here and we're going to add one more. It is action and we got to update that local state because we got to say which of those lists are we going to want to show. So when we fire a simple search, we're going to want to show a filtered list. Okay, so let's update local state. 
And we want to set our show full list Boolean. It's remember it defaults to true. So we want to set the value and we want to set the value not from a variable, but a very specific value. And that value is false. Beautiful. All right. So we got our actions set up correctly, but those local state variables are not actually bound to any of the lists. They're just like ready to be hooked up, but they're not actually hooked up. So let's take our first list view here and say that this is going to be our full list. And so we're just going to come over to our conditional visibility. That means it's only visible if a certain condition is met. And we are going to say that it's going to be based on that local state variable. Boom. So if it's true, then we'll see the full list. And remember the default's true. If it's false, that's what happens when we click the button, then it'll be hidden. We just see it right now because we've gotten this button clicked right here. And that's just a helper to help us build. All right, great. So now let's go to our filtered list down here and set up our filtering. And let's come over to our backend query right here. And we just remove this backend query because we want the children generated from that simple search query we made. Okay, so we go into our generate dynamic children and let's come down here and we want to generate these children based on our simple search results let's give it a variable name and confirm it's just telling us we're going to generate children and that's exactly what we want great now let's go back and properly bind our data so let's come into our text here and see we've got our dynamic children here our fruits item that's exactly what we want we want our name and to our image, we're going to do the same thing set from variable dynamic children list and image. Great. Let's test this out and see how it's working. All right. Awesome. So here's our list. Let's scroll down or zoom out and we can see our list here and let's search for Kiwi and search. And there we go. And I said before that I wanted to show you something cool, and that is this. Let's type in green and search, and we get these things here. So notice what's happening. We have that color data in our database right here, and we set up in our simple search that we wanted to search both of these fields. And we can do that even though we're not actually displaying that data in each of our widgets. So that makes simple search pretty powerful. And notice also that our showing and our hiding of our full list with that local variable worked great. But we have one more thing to implement, and that's this button right here. If we want to start over and clear the results, of course we can delete all that stuff and then search and we get everything back, but that's kind of annoying. And it's really easy to set this up. So let's go over, let's select our icon button let's put an action on there we are going to change this local state variable the only one we've got and we're going to set that to true because remember this is true on showing full list okay great and let's just reload so now if we search for green and we get our results and then if we want to clear it and start over it's just as easy as clicking our icon button so that's the third way to filter data in your flutterflow app with simple search let us know if you've got any questions and we'll see you in the next video